Hello, Microbio 527. This video is going to explain to you how to use Rock Hopper. First of all, to use the program, you got to go get it. So get your web browser, go up and search for Rock Hopper and RNA Seq. This will take you to a website that is part of the paper that's listed. And this is a system for analyzing bacterial RNA-seq data. It's a program that compiles all the stuff as we talked about in the lecture, maps all the sequences to their sites on the DNA, and then predicts what gene that is. So you'll come to this site here called Rock Hopper. You'll then click on download, and then you can pick the interface that you use, either Mac, Windows, or if it's Unix, you can download the jar file and use that, etc., etc. I'm going to pick Mac because that's what I've got here. So I click on Mac and it downloads the file. There we go. The Rock Hopper is now downloaded. Now that we've got Rock Hopper downloaded, the next thing that we need to do is we need to expand it. So it's going to come down into your downloads folder. So go in there and what you're looking for is Rock Hopper DMG. So you double click on that and it will launch and it's gonna scan through it and then see that it's okay to use and it should expand onto your folder. So if I look here, it's now expanded this disc and I have a little thing called Rock Hopper. And it basically says, please move Rock Hopper to the desktop. You don't have to do that you can actually drag it and drop it into your applications folder. So that's what I'm going to do. So I'm just going to drag it and then, well, okay, I'm going to drag it and then drop it on the applications folder. And then it will copy it. Okay, so it's now copied to my applications folder. I open up my applications folder and I go over and I look for Rock Hopper. There it is. I'll launch Rock Hopper. You're going to get this. It's going to say to open Rock Hopper app, you need to install the legacy Java SE6 runtime. Click on more info. This is going to take you to another website. What you're doing is you're downloading an older Java that Rock Hopper actually needs. So you download this older Java. I don't think you need to do this on Windows. On Windows, what you need to do is you need to install Java on Windows, and it will tell you to do that. So I now double click on this. It's opening the Java for OS 10 DMG. There it is. It launches. I launch the Java for OS 10 package. Say continue. Say continue. Say continue. Agree with this. Install and then type my password and that's the password it now installs it onto the disk and it says it's successful so now that we've had this you can close it move it to the trash and now if we go back to rock hopper and launch it it should launch and there we go we now have the rock hopper application working in our computer now the other thing that we need is we actually need the files that we're going to analyze. And these are RNA-seq data files. And they're huge. They have thousands and thousands and thousands of little sequences of different RNAs that were expressed by organisms under different conditions. We're going to actually do two of them. I'm going to show you how to do one, and then you're going to analyze the other for the class. I have all the data that you needed over in courses. If you go to the Microbio 527 website and you click on modules, you'll see one of them's gene expression and they have SAM files for rockhopper.zip. That's a type of format that is readable by rockhopper and usable. Now, if I click on this, it's going to download it. So I'll click on that. It'll start the download. I am going to cancel this download because it takes forever. So if I click on download, it will start downloading and it's going to take about six minutes. So we're not going to do that. I already have the file right here on the desktop. So I am going to double click on this. This is a zip file. It will expand it and it is expanding the SAM files for Rock Hopper. Again, this takes a while, so you're gonna have to be patient. 
Okay, the files have now downloaded and I've expanded them and they are in a folder called SAM files for Rockhopper. And what these are is RNA seq data under different conditions. And I have two here. So, what are these example files that we're going to use? The examples they're going to use are actually from an experiment that was done looking at the growth or what genes are expressed in Staph aureus, a known pathogen, in the presence of just TSB medium and then TSB plus surfactant. And surfactant is something that you find in lung tissue. So it kind of simulates what this organism would do inside a host versus when it's just growing out in the environment or in TSB in this case. And the thought is that we may find virulence genes from doing this. But before we map it, we have to know exactly what organism was used. So if we just click on one of these, it brings it up and it tells us the organism is Staphylococcus aureus subspecies aureus strain Newman. That is the strain that was used in these experiments and that's the one we need to call up into Rockhopper. So first of all, we will switch to Rockhopper and we'll put that in Staphylococcus aureus subspecies aureus and then we're gonna look for strain Newman. Actually, let's try something. If we type in new men, hey, that works. And then you'll notice one really irritating thing about rock hoppers. If you type three letters, it then highlights it. And then every time you type a letter, it does another one. Okay, there it is. Replicon name, Staphylococcus aureus, subspecies aureus, strain Newman. There's a single chromosome. So that's all we need to do. With Rhodobacter spheroides, it actually has two chromosomes. We're using strain 241 and you have to bring both those chromosomes in for the replicon name. If you need to do another replicon, you just click on this little yellow plus here and you can type it in and we'll just do strain Newman again and see if we can get it in. So that's Newport that actually has plasmids, but we're using strain Newman. We don't need that, so we're gonna get rid of it, but you'll need it later. Okay, so we're gonna do true replicans. One of them is gonna be TSB. Uh, that's one experiment. The other experiment is TSB plus surfactant. And now we need to put in the RNA-seq data. So I'm going to choose browse here and then I need to go and I set these up. They are in my documents folder and I go down and it is called Yeah, SAM files for rock hopper. I click in here. Here's the TSB experiment, SAM file. And again, I just downloaded this data from this website and then converted it into a SAM file, which is what rock hopper understands. And now we go to the surfactant one. And now we're ready. You hit submit. And it goes through and it's now taking out all the RNA seq data. It is then making sure it's fine and it's going to start comparing it to that replicon the staph aureus subspecies aureus strain newman replicon okay it is done with the first read and you'll see it's successfully aligned is 94 percent 48 percent was to or 90 some percent was to ribosomal rnas but that's totally totally expected because most of what the cells make is ribosomal RNA and it's really what we're interested in is 2% that isn't. Now it's doing the surfactant one and it's analyzing that. And again, depending on the speed of your computer, this can take a while, so you need to be patient. Okay, there it's all done. Now it is going to start comparing them, and analyzing them. Okay, boom, it's done. Now, if you want, just for fun, you can view the results by clicking the Integrated Genome Viewer. So you just click on this and it launches this Integrated Genome Viewer. And it will actually map this all to your genome and show you where the expression is, which is kind of cool. So if we drag this out and you can actually move in, these are the two chromosomes and this shows you where expression is. And you can see a bird's eye view of where the expression goes up and down. So that kind of gives you some, some an interesting comparison of what's going on. 
So if we look over on the right here, you can see, let's see if there's any region. Okay, right here, you see these genes go down in the surfactant versus up in just the TSB. Okay, but doing this visually would really be a pain. There's another way to do it, which I'll show you right now. So let's close down the integrated genome viewer here. And what we're interested in is what Rockhopper made. Now, what it will do is Rockhopper will open a file called Rockhopper results. So create a folder and then create files inside that Rockhopper results. So they will be in the same folder as your Rockhopper app. And here are my Rockhopper results. If I open that up, it shows you, you know, all of the files and what you're really looking for are these things right here. There'll be one, they'll be labeled with a label that just identifies it when it's done. Look at the time it was done, doing this at 8.53 p.m. And you wanna open the transcripts file. But before you do that, let's change the extension. We're gonna change it to comma separated values, right? And it's gonna say, are you really sure you wanna do that? Yes, shut up, go away. So we then click on this and we are gonna open this with Microsoft Excel and this then launches. But again, realize what we just did. We took all this sequencing data, we mapped it to a chromosome, and we know what the expression of every gene within that organism was. That's pretty cool. Now what we're gonna do is we're gonna compare the expression between the two and see which ones go up under virulence conditions. Okay, here it is. Data comes up. Now the first thing you'll notice is all the data came in the first cell and there's nothing in the second cell, et cetera, et cetera. And these, this, is, this is a tab delimited file. So there's tabs in between, each thing, in, in between each thing. So we need to map that to into columns based on tabs. So the first thing you do is just click on the A to select the whole column. Then you go to data and you'll see this thing here called text to columns in Excel. If you click on that, you say it's a delimited file. You go next, you say it's only tabs and you'll see it shows you how it's going to space it out, out and this looks fine. And then we say next and we say finish. And it's already data there, it's fine. You say, okay, now it's all separated into tab delimited files. All right, so the first heading is transcription start. The second heading is transcription stop. Our other transcription starts and trans or translation starts and translation stops. And then transcription stop. It tells you if it's the plus strand or minus strand, we don't care. care. Here's the one column that's of interest, the name. So it tells you the gene. And then what we're really interested in here is in columns I and J, right? This tells you the relative expression in each of these levels. So this is the one in TSB. This is the one in surfactant. And what we want to do is compare them. So we're going to make another column. We're going to call it column L and we'll say wire, um, let's call this increase in surfactant environment. So this is gonna be the fold increase. We wanna now do a function. What we wanna do is we wanna take this value, expression in TSB plus surfactant, and divide it by the expression in TSB, okay? But there's a complication. Sometimes these values are empty, and sometimes this value is zero, and if you divide by zero, you get an undefined value. So we have to do something to check for that. So we have to make kind of a complicated formula. And here it is. First of all, we're going to use if. All right. And the logical test is this. If, and then we're going to put or, and we're going to say I2 is equal to zero, comma, and then we're going to say is blank and then put i2 again okay 
if it if either of those is true it's zero or it's blank we're just going to put zero there if it's not we're going to divide j2 by i2 all right we put that in and it says the ratio is 0 0.7719 which is about right that's less so that makes sense okay there's your value now we're going to say copy we're going to select this And then we're going to watch Excel spin for no reason. I don't know why. Okay, there we go. And then we're going to click here. And now you scroll all the way down until you get to the bottom of your jeans. There it is. We're going to hold down the shift key. We're going to click. And then we're going to paste. Paste those values in. Now we've put in a value for every one. And we're going to see which ones increase and which ones decrease. Now, go all the way down to the spreadsheet again. And what we're most interested in is the ones that increase the most. So we're at the bottom of the spreadsheet. We clicked in that thing in the bottom, bottom right square. Now we're going to scroll all the way to the top. We're going to go to the top left. And then we're going to go... Now, first of all, what we're going to do is we're going to say save. So file, save, and we're going to make this, let's go actually file, save as, and we're going to save this as an Excel file. All right, save it. That way nothing, anything crazy happens, we don't lose it. Now what we're going to do is we're going to sort it, right? So we're going to sort. And you're going to sort by which column? You're going to do it by the one we just made, increase and subtract in environment. And you want it largest to smallest. And you say, OK. OK, now, if we scroll all the way to the top, OK, these are the genes that increase the mo most. And remember, it tells you what the product is here. So there's a whole bunch of them. There's a hypothetical protein. There's an immunogen, right? And this one went up 25 fold. The next one went up 17. Immunodominant antigen B, that went up. Hypothetical protein, we don't know what that is. Urease subunit gamma. And you look at these and see if now these are candidates for potential virulence genes. So you go through and you look at them and you see, and one thing that's really interesting here is if I look down here at column 25, leukocytin precursor, that's leukocytin, that is a toxin. So definitely that would increase, right? Capsular polysaccharide synthesis, it's gonna make more capsule, that would be protective. This makes sense. Okay, that shows you how you can actually do this analysis and figure out what genes are expressed from data. Anybody can grab all the different experiments that are online and sometimes you can combine novel ones that haven't been done before and that's actually what we're going to do with the experiment that I'm going to ask you to do in class. What I've grabbed is I've actually grabbed data from Rhodobacter spheroides going under aerobic conditions and Rhodobacter spheroides going under anaerobic conditions and you're going to find out what genes are turned on when you go from aerobic conditions to anaerobic conditions.